Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you for this great day you've given us to praise and to worship you, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. And now, Father, may the words of our mouths and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, amen. amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone, again. It is great to be here today. Take a few moments while I get my Bible and my notes and everything that I came prepared with today for my three-hour sermon. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, guys. I'll try to keep it short. Homily is what I've been trying to do these times, and it's got to be, it, it, it's difficult. I'll just say that, because honestly, we just love to preach, and you know, um, we're going to do some of that today, so bear with me. All Saints Sunday. We're going to celebrate All Saints. It's a beautiful day. It actually falls on a Sunday, which is actually amazing. So you're going to hear a lot of these same things. Uh, Amber said it when we were singing worship. We are going to gather with the saints who are around the throne of God, praising Him continually. We just finished up a series on Psalm 23. Do you guys remember the very end of that where David says, I will bless the house of the Lord forever and what? Forever and ever and ever and ever. That means there's no end. Amen. Amen. That means we have a kingdom that we will be going to. There is this heavenly place where there is God and his son, Jesus Christ. That should be a blessing for us. Amen. Amen. Hey, I say this almost every Sunday I preach. You know, the world's going crazy. You can see it. We are still God's children. We are still his people. We are counter to the culture. Amen. We are counter to the culture. If the culture is crying out for, hey, we want earthly pleasures, we are the people group that believe in Jesus, and we say there's a better way. There's this man named Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that's what I think the world needs today, and I think it needs revival. I'm going to say that this morning. The church needs revival. No matter how bad it's getting or will get, God is faithful. There is a remnant of his people on this earth, and that's who we are. And that means we need to reconcile with one another and the world and with God to do the work of God. Amen? Amen. So St. Paul always says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I love those words and I'm going to start with my message that way this morning. And the text for this morning, Sarah read beautifully, is from Revelation chapter 7. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 17. And here's where St. John gives us a glimpse of... Of the heavenly worship, which believe it or not is what we do when we come together in church. That is what we're doing. And let's just read it one more time. It says this He says, After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And it goes on. And I'm just going to stop there for a minute. So this morning... Like I said before, we're observing the celebration of All Saints Day. It's a big feast day. Church people like to eat. I don't know if you know that. It's a feast day. And each year, uh, All Saints does fall on November 1st. Uh, so we're lucky today that it's a Sunday, right? And aside, it's also been known through the centuries as All Hallows Day. I'm sure you've heard that. Thus, the other day has been celebrated in recent days, All Hallows Eve, or maybe Halloween. Some of you may have gone out and trick-or-treated last night. But historically, All Saints Day began as a commemoration of the martyrs who had died for their Christian faith. But over the years, it has evolved into a day when we honor and remember all the saints, 
those who in death have joined the church triumphant. That's what we call those who have gone on and who are worshiping around the throne of God, the church triumphant, and as well as the faithful saints in the present who serve Jesus Christ, and that's us. You know that church, you're saints. Amen. Hey, just because we're in church, we're in masses, doesn't mean you can't be alive and well, okay? I started watching recently, and I think you can still find it uh, put out by Legionnaire Ministries, and it's on Martin Luther. And it's about the Reformation. It's about an hour-long documentary, and it's free right now, so I would take advantage of it. It's very beautiful. Martin Luther, he held that all Christians are at the same point both sinner and saint. Sinners because of our rebellious nature, but saints because of salvation in Jesus. So today we celebrate all saints, all those who have died in the faith, and now are living on the other side of eternity, as well as each of us who are still here living in faith on this side of eternity. And that includes every single one of us. And the thing I'd like to focus on a little bit this morning on this All Saints is its connection to the church and usually the teaching we hear from the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, which is the communion of saints. So I'm sure the phrase, the communion of saints, you're pretty familiar with that. It's a part of our historical Christian confession. We hear it in the Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed. It says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, and the communion of saints. So what we are celebrating today in All Saints is connected to the teaching of the communion of saints. That idea that all of God's people in heaven and on earth are spiritually connected and united. So in other words, Christians believe that the saints of God in heaven are just as alive as you and I. And that we are woven together in a tight-knit communion. If you allow me a little bit, there's a passage from a book. It's called The Presence, an Approach to the Holy Communion. And it was written by a Lutheran pastor by the name of Kurtold von Schneck. I'm not going to say that again. Back in the 1940s. And one of the chapters in his book is titled Our Saints. And I wish we had time to go into the whole chapter. But here's just a portion of it. And he is speaking communion of saints. And he says this. He says, when we are deprived of loved ones. It is a tremendous shock. For the time, we are stunned. Not everyone can feel at once their continuing companionship. We should not, for that reason, despair. An adjustment must take place in our lives, reaching deep into our habits, emotions, and thoughts. Some souls may make this adjustment quickly. And for most of us, it comes slowly and hard. Many an hour is filled with loneliness and agonizing doubt. And by ourselves, we can never make this adjustment. We must come to a sense of the continuing presence of our loved ones. And we can do that if we realize the presence of our living Lord. And as we seek and find our risen Lord, yes, we will know that our dear departed are alive and well. They are with him. And we find the reality that their continued life is going to be with him. And the saints are part of the church. They worship the risen Christ face to face. We say that in our liturgy that we hope to see our Lord face to face. And while we worship the same risen Christ under the veil here, it's under the bread and the wine at the table. At the communion, when we come to communion, we are linked with heaven, with the communion of the saints, with our loved ones. Because it is that time where we enter in, right, where the heavenlies, the throne of grace, we are partaking in this wonderful feast. You know, we just lost our beloved brother, Dennis. And I know that he is face to face with Jesus. And he is in that heavenly realm, praising the Lord. And he might, and I will say this, he is the lucky one. Dennis has gone home. So, when we come to the table, it's a place where we can meet our Lord. It's a place where we can partake, right, in the heavenlies of what's happening 
with the throne of grace. I'll give you a little bit of example, and I'll use a personal experience. I lost my dad some time years ago. It's still hard. People say, oh, it gets easier. It never gets easier. The years get longer. I lose more hair, get grayer. That's the only part that, you know, seems to get harder when I look in the mirror. Not the same guy I was 20 years ago. And people always ask me, they're like, well, don't you go back to the cemetery and don't you go back and, and put, you know, flowers down? And I say, no, I haven't gone back since the day he was buried because he's not there. He's with Jesus. So I don't have to go to that spot and mourn anymore. I know where he is. I've known he's gone to heaven. I know he is with Jesus. And it's hard at times when we see people like that who may be hopeless and they continue to go to that spot and mourn and only if they could know that there's salvation through Jesus Christ. Because our human nature needs more than assurance that someday and in some way we shall meet our loved ones again in heaven. Because I know many of you sitting here today are longing for that day as well. To see your loved ones again in a new body. And we can all have that holy meal together. So when we then view the death in the light of the communion of saints and holy communion, there is no helpless bereavement. In other words... Our loved ones who are in faith in Jesus, who knew Jesus, they have gone and they have gone on that journey and they are sitting at that table with the other saints who have gone before. I love the words in the liturgy and I will say them in just a little bit in Eucharist and it's beautiful and it's this. It says, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. Okay, those words are beautiful. Because I know that our friends who know Jesus, they're there. They are in heaven and they're having the communion with the other saints. You see, the nearer I come to my Lord in holy communion, the nearer we come to the saints, to our loved ones who have gone before us. We are the bodies of Christ. And we are members of his family. So again, I know for many of you, we do miss our loved ones, and it is very hard. And I pray that the Lord Jesus will continue to walk beside you, especially with anxiety and despair. Because I think we all earn to be with our Lord Jesus Christ, and we love our brothers and sisters who want to be with Jesus and who have gone home to be with Jesus. And I think it's a beautiful thing that we have this blessed sacrament that links us not merely to Bethlehem and Calvary, but to the whole world beyond the grave as well. For at the table, the infinite is shrined to the finite. Heaven comes down to earth and the seen and the unseen are met. And that is a beautiful reality. And then we have this final phase of the proper preface, and it says, right, therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, it speaks so clearly and beautifully of this reality. And what we must always remember when we go to the Lord's Supper is that we commune with Christ, and wherever Christ is, there is heaven. And this communion includes all the saints. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Ruth, Peter, Paul, grandparents, great-grandparents, spouses, children. All the saints now living all over the world and those still to come. One pastor wrote, he says this, he says, After someone dies, it's good to think of them at the Lord's Supper, knowing that we commune here below at the table of the Lamb and sing his songs, and we join them in that heavenly Praise, the praise that is surrounding the table of the throne and the kingdom. Because we know his victory over death in the grave for us and our salvation. And this is what was revealed to St. John on that island on Patmos. So I will leave this with you today. May the Holy Spirit enlighten you and bless you to realize that in Christ, 
in that great mystery of our union with him, you and I are joined to all who are joined to him. Amen? I want to say this prayer over us this morning, so let us just pray. It says, O God, the King of saints, we praise and magnify your holy name for all your servants who have finished their course in your faith and fear, for the blessed Virgin Mary, for the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and for all your other righteous servants. And we beseech you that, encouraged by their example, strengthened by their fellowship, we may come to everlasting life through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.